Well, welcome to getting started with eBay. I hope that uh, I can give you the guidance uh, uh, that you need in uh, uh, as simple as possible. I want to make this a, a quick and simple video that just outlines exactly how to begin listing on eBay, uh, give you a few tips and tricks, uh, and then later as, uh, as we grow with your business, we'll learn more and we'll dive into more of it. But right now, let's start with some basics. So let's start with finding an item to list. Uh, uh, if you've got my uh, list of products that I sent you, uh, you can look in there to find an item. And we're usually going to change the title from what's here. But uh, you can see here that we have uh, links uh, here to the different products. And if you hover over one of those, it pops up a clickable link. You click on that and that will take you to the page that has the product. To get started with this, we just copy only part of the product uh, um, name, title. We're not going to take the whole title from Amazon or wherever to search it. We just take part of it and go in here and say, uh, there we go, four-piece outdoor furniture set. That looks like a good search. We have 825 search results. Well, if we scroll down on the left-hand side, we have a show only section over here. So that's what we want to click on is show only sold listings. And that way we're only looking at items that have actually sold, which you can see by the green price there. Now, all we need is a basic uh, listing. We don't need the exact same item. Any one of these will work because what we're trying to do is sell a similar item. We just want to get into the right category of outdoor furniture because that's what we have with Amazon here is outdoor furniture. That's all we're trying to do. So we can come in here and just say, all right, uh, sell one like this. And uh, the closer we get to it, the better, of course, but you don't want to spend too much time with that either. So now we'll come into this list and create your listing page. If you do not see a page uh, similar to this, if your page uh, um, doesn't look like this one with all these details here, then you're probably on the basic listing tool. If you're new to eBay, they're going to try to force you into that, and you'll have a link up at the top, like uh, these links up here. You'll have one that says, uh, click here to switch to advanced listing tool, or switch to advanced listing tool, or something like that we want to use that link. So you'll go ahead and click on it. It'll have a little pop-up that'll come up and say, are you sure you want to switch? Yes, switch. You know, we don't try and, or don't stay where they want to try and keep us. We switch to the advanced listing tool and then you will see this page. Once you get to this page, you can complete your listing and once you complete a listing in this uh, advanced listing tool, it will always default back to this one instead of trying to force you to that basic listing tool. Okay, so one of the first things is the category selection. We've already selected a category by clicking Sell Similar, so we're already in the right category. Do not add a second category because they will charge you extra for it. We do not want to worry about saving the inventory, and we do not want to mess with multiple variations for the item at this time. So those we're going to ignore. And we'll come down to the Describe Your Item section, where we want to get a good title in our, our uh, title for our item. Now we've got two characters remaining here. It'll tell us how many we have as we start typing into that if we're creating our own. So you can see we've got a pretty good title here. If we want to find keywords so to make this better, then we can do that search on eBay for completed listings. So I would recommend having an additional eBay tab open like I have here. So in one tab, I have my listing that I'm doing. In another tab, I have the search for eBay here. And then in other tabs, I still have my list and my Amazon um, link page up. Okay, So we can go and look at these other listings and see what keywords they used in their titles to make sure that we can fill out our title as full as possible. Now, I've already uh, done that research on this, and I like this title. I was looking at it earlier, so that title is good. Now we want our images back on. Amazon, if you click on this image, this primary image here, click it, it'll open a big window like this with bigger, uh, a bigger image. And we can right click, save image as, and choose where we want to save it. Now we'll have all these options with our folders over here and we can create an eBay folder like I did here. In my documents I created an eBay folder to save my items. And then name them with keywords related to your products. Always use hyphens in place of spaces when you're saving files. So any file names on the computer should use hyphens because computers sometimes can have problems uh, 
reading spaces. So we save that. Now I've already saved a couple of them here, so I don't have to worry about that. And then we go back to our listing and we can click this link to upload the photo. Now in this uploader, we'll select photos and then we have to browse to where our photos are. Now again, mine is already defaulted to the location, but if it wasn't, if it was uh, up at Mike Wood, then I have to say, okay, well, I'm in Documents uh, and then eBay. Oh, there's my image right there. Now if we want to have multiple images, we can click one and then hold Shift on our keyboard and click the Next and then Open or press Enter and it will bring all of those items up for us. Okay. Now in this editor, I can also move these around. I like this uh, image better than the one with the white background, so I'll move the white over here and that puts this image as our first primary image. Next, we can do a little bit of uh, adjusting of the uh, contrast of the image by clicking this little sun icon. Contrast is this one here that has a white and a dark shaded side. Just increase the contrast a bit so that it makes that uh, image pop a little more. And I actually like to do that on all of my images. We'll do that on this one as well as soon as it's done saving. Here we are. And we'll increase the contrast on that one. That'll make your image stand out beyond other images out there. And that alone, that little tip right there, will help your item get more clicks than most other people. And that's going to get you sales eventually. Click Finish and we come back to our page here with our details. Now, UPC we usually don't have, so I like to just choose Does Not Apply or NA. Um, type. Well, it's a sofa set, but it's not just a sofa. It's a sofa, comma, table, comma, chairs set. Um, and I would also say patio, poolside, so I can get some extra keywords in there because I don't have poolside in my title up there. We're going to just leave it as unbranded. Generally, that's what I recommend is just call it unbranded. MPN does not apply. Manufacturer's part number. Material Rattan slash Wicker. I don't know all that much about these materials, but I think those are similar, so we'll use them synonymously. Color is gray. We'll choose our color. Model, uh, um, we don't need that. Does not apply. We can just remove it. UPC, we don't need. We don't need EIN, and we don't need country or region. So I just remove those by clicking the Remove link. Then we come down to our Details section. Most of the time, it'll default to HTML, where you don't have any tools here. If you click on Standard, then you have all these options for tools. Now, I actually have a, a document I save that I use for uh, for all of my <clears throat> eBay listings. And so I'll copy that every time and paste it into my listings. Then I can just update the, t the description information. So we can go here and call this item description. And for the title, I want it bold and centered like that, but I want this in there. So I have it pre-formatted. If I just copy that, out of there, and I just clicked on that three times, triple click, and that highlights the whole thing. We scroll down and double click on that one word title, paste over it, and look at that. Bold, centered, and uh, larger font size, just like my template. If you don't have a template like that or would like one, let me know and I can send it to you. But it, uh, it's not something you have to have for your first listing either. Uh, then we've got a section here. Uh, we, I'll delete that because that's not pertinent to this one, but this would be our item description area. So we go over to the Amazon tab. We just highlight these bullet points right here and copy those. Come over here and paste. And then if we want to copy more description info from down below on Amazon, we can do that as well. Um, and we can just take some of this section here. You might want to read through that, make sure you don't have any uh, um, links going to Amazon or descriptive information that we don't want or anything like that. Um, I don't want this centered. I want that to go this way. I don't want it bold. There we go. There we are. And the rest of the details are here. So I have my details on my best offers uh, and why I have that shipping details, payment details, feedback and returns policy all here within my listing. And uh, so all my listings have that. 
Then we come down to this section where we can do either auction or fixed price. I have a, a fixed cost, so I'm going to do a fixed price listing. And um, back on, uh, so we go to Amazon. When you're looking at that, you verify the price and see is that still what I have here? Yes, 260 estimate. 379 is what I should list it for then, so we'll put it in for. Um, I'm going to do this at uh, 389. Why not? And I will. I can leave this best offer check there, but I'm going to check these boxes and say, hey, if it's less than 370, I'm I'm just I'm not going to mess with it. So more than if it's 370 or more, it'll be accepted automatically. If it's less, it'll be rejected. I'm going to put this as a seven-day listing, and I'm going to schedule the start time. Or or normally I would. It's actually afternoon now, so I'll leave that. But you might want to schedule if you're doing it on different days. Do this to start on um, Monday or Tuesday afternoon or evening. Um, to start it. And let's see. Uh, okay, and then, so that's a duration. Uh, a lot of times I'll just do good till canceled duration, which is at the bottom of that list there. Um, select how you'll be paid. You'll put your e um, PayPal email address there. Add shipping details. I just do flat rate so I don't have to calculate anything. And with flat, then I have these general things like economy, standard, expedited. I don't have to actually choose a carrier. When you first do this, you'll have a list of carriers that you have to select. I select all except UPS because UPS is costly and complicated. <laughs> so I do FedEx or USPS generally. So I've offered a free shipping for standard economy shipping and then an expedited shipping of $30. You want to be careful about that, doing expedited, because they expect it to be fast and happen quickly. Um, and you may not have that option. You know, you don't control it. So you might want to just not do that and keep it as a, a basic economy. Um, I have an option to use the global shipping program here, which is the only way I ship uh, uh, overseas. I would recommend that you just do... Uh, um, only uh, continental U.S. And, and don't even do any international shipping at this time. You don't have to worry about uh, the package details because we're not going to actually ship the product or create a, uh, a label through eBay. And then under the other details, we can put in sales tax, select your state here and put sales tax rate, and we can select returns accepted, um, which is 14 days money uh, that they have to get uh, a return or to complete a return. Uh, the return will give money back. The buyer is responsible for return shipping. And then I put a note here, um, subject to full return policy as outlined in listing details. So that uh, lets them know that, hey, you better read our return policy up here, which basically states if we ship you the item that you expected, then there are no returns. We're not going to return it if everything is good. Uh, if there's a problem, if we ship the wrong thing, if it's broken, then of course we'll fix it. We'll work with it. So that way I don't have to really deal with returns much. And so then we, we complete our listing. Now if I want to list another item, uh, maybe another uh, product, and notice this little note up here. It says, hey, you can't ship this using the Global Shipping Center. Okay, no big deal. Um, we won't ship it globally. All right? We submit. So if we want to do multiple listings of similar items, now I can just click Sell Similar. And that will bring me right back into that listing, or a duplicate listing essentially. You can't duplicate the exact same title. You've got to change it a little bit. I listed this one earlier. That's why I put that dash two there. But uh, so you just go in and, and uh, make the uh, um, you know sell similar. It starts a, a new listing with all your details, and you just adjust the image if it's a different one, or the title, uh, or amount, whatever it is you need to adjust. You make changes, but it makes it fast to list a lot of similar items to do that. Now, once that item sells. And I'll come back in here. I'll find the item in my list that I sold. I'll click on the link and uh, bring it up in Amazon and uh, go look for it. Now, uh, um, you want to make sure to maybe make a note of uh, the title differences uh, if there are so that you know which item you listed there. Um, but then I come in here and I can click Add to Cart. And uh, uh, it shows two items because I actually have that in there twice. I tried to do this uh, uh, video earlier and didn't work. 
Um, we can change that to one, and then uh, we can complete our checkout. And as you're going through the checkout, proceed to checkout, it uh, will let you, or it'll require you to sign in, and then it asks for your shipping address. Who are we going to ship it to? Well, of course, we're going to change that to ship it to the person that we want to uh, to have this sent to, the person who bought it in uh, eBay, right? Now, I don't actually want to order this right now, so I'm going to delete that from the cart. But that's how you do it. You just go through uh, and follow the instructions on the screen there. And when they ask for a ship to address, well, you enter the ship to address. Uh, and we get that from our uh, eBay or PayPal email that uh, was sent to us. And that is how you complete the, uh, a, a checkout. Now, once we, um, once we have sold that item, if we come back in here to look at our list of sold items, we'll have it listed here, and there will be a drop-down and actions drop-down column. Underneath that, we can add tracking number. We can mark it as shipped. Only after we've shipped it do we do that, of course, and once we get the tracking number, we mark it. This is also where we can verify that it's been paid before we ship it. We want to make sure that these are dark, that it says that they've completed checkout, that it says they made payment and tells us when. If these are not dark and you get an email from them telling you they've paid, then they are lying and trying to commit fraud. And you do not want to ship anything because they haven't paid for it. So uh, if that happens, let me know and we'll, I'll take you through and show you how to report them to uh, uh, eBay. In fact, part of that is actually under here, report a buyer. Most things that you need to do related to a, a listing will be under this actions dropdown. So you'll want to come back and review this video now. If you feel like this went through through these details too fast and you're new to computers and you're not following all this or something, well, there's hope. When you are watching the video, you'll have buttons down here where you can play it and pause it. Okay? And not only that, but if we've gone, you know, like we're at the end of this video and you think, well, I want to know what happened back here. Well, you can go click back this far and then pause it once you've heard. So watch it, learn what needs to be done, pause it, go go do it on eBay and, and apply. When you're ready for the next step, come back to my video, play it, and remember that you can skip back and forth on the video to different areas. Okay? So hopefully this will give you the, the steps to get things started. Now once you complete that listing, let's look at this. Once you complete the listing, I need the ID number. Well, if you go into the item, You'll see your username right over here with your feedback score behind it. And if you scroll down a little bit, right down here in the description area at the top right is an item number. If you'll copy that and send it to me, then I'll have that uh, item. Or you can uh, go up to the, the address bar in the top and copy the address, which will look like this. That's the address to this page. Okay, and that gives me the uh, link to the item as well. So that's an option. Um, or once you list an item, eBay will send you a confirmation telling you that the item has been listed and you can forward that to me. Any of those will get me the listing so I can give you some feedback and suggestions uh, on any of it. Okay. So I hope that uh, has been helpful for you. Uh, please uh, get started, jump into that, and uh, don't stop once you list one. Send me a link to it, and then keep listing. I will get back to you with uh, an email and, and some result or some uh, a review and some notes on your listings uh, right away. But I want you to continue uh, listing, so you've got you're really doing a good start to your business.